Disappearing loop cast on is one way to cast on from the center out of the project. So where you're starting with a very small number of stitches and then working outwards with increases to create a square or a circle or maybe a hexagon. I like to use this method for casting on top down hats. I've used it on some of my toy patterns that are almost worked like a hat pattern as well. And it's also useful for things like circular shawls or blankets or blankets that are worked in modular pieces like my nectar blanket where each hexagon is worked from the center out. There are lots of other ways to cast on from the center out. I like the disappearing loop one because it's relatively easy to work and you don't need any extra tools like a crochet hook. You just need the needles you're going to start working with whether that is a long circular for magic loop or double pointed needles, or maybe you're using two circulars. Because you're starting with a very small number of stitches, often six or eight, you will be increasing rapidly, but you will still be working with a very small circumference at the beginning of your project. So you do need needles for working a small circumference. Even for the first few rounds, the sort of very short circular needles that are sometimes used for socks, even those will be too long to fit your initial stitches on. So you do need to use DPNs, magic loop, two circulars, whichever your preferred method is. If you've never tried any of those methods, I would try at least a swatch where you're not casting on from the center out, try casting on maybe 20 or 30 stitches and joining the round and try getting comfortable with working with those needles for those small, small circumferences before you add in dealing with this cast on method because it can be a bit fiddly, especially when you've only got a few stitches kind of holding everything together. It feels like your needles are sliding around, your stitches are moving. So do practice one of those methods or all of them if you've never done those before, before coming back and doing the cast on with me. I'm gonna show you how to work the disappearing loop cast on with quite a chunky yarn so that you can see what you're doing clearly. And it's called the disappearing loop method because you are essentially casting on stitches around a loop of yarn using your working yarn rather than scrap yarn. And then you can take your tail, see it's attached alongside here. You can take the tail of yarn and pull it tight to snug all your stitches up against each other so that the loop itself disappears. And then at your beginning of your project, you may actually find it easier to start knitting with that loop kind of loosened up a bit because you can pull it tight at any point. If you are knitting a project like the Muscle Bra Hat, do bear in mind that eventually when you come to knit your second crown, you will lose access to that tail. That tail on the wrong side. So you do want to pull it tight and weave in your end before you lose that access to it completely. It's just a little heads up if you are knitting muscle bra. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to work the cast on for an even or odd number of stitches using either DPNs or working with a circular needle for magic loop. This cast on is often called the disappearing loop cast on. Sometimes it's also referred to as the magic loop cast on, especially in crochet. You can work this with a crochet hook and if you already crochet and you want to transfer this to knitting, then you might want to try this method. I'm going to show you how to work it solely with knitting needles though, but structurally it's pretty much the same. And it's called the disappearing loop because you have a loop of yarn in the center, you can kind of see it here, around which you're forming your first stitches. And if I tug the tail of my yarn, which I have here, I can make that loop disappear, I can close it up. And when I come to the end of my project, I can make sure it's nice and tight and then I can weave in the end. A key thing to know about this is that you don't have to tighten that loop immediately. And it's actually often easier to work the first few rounds of your project with that loop a little bit loose and open. It just makes it easier to juggle all of those stitches across several needles. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to cast on for an even number of stitches first. And there's just a subtle tweak if you want to cast on for an odd number. 
and there will be chapter markers on this so if you're working on a project and you know you need a number then you can just skip right to that time code. I'm going to begin with one needle that can be a DPN or a circular. At the moment the cast on process is the same we're going to cast on all of our stitches onto one needle, one needle tip and then I'm going to take my tail end of yarn you want to leave enough to weave in and so that if your disappearing loop loosens up that the little end doesn't pop out. So somewhere in the six to eight inches region, 15, 20 centimeters. And then lay that over your left hand and wrap around your first two fingers to make a loop. You can make that a little bit bigger. The crucial things are that the ball end is on your left, tail end is on the right, and then the tail end is over, it's closer to you than the ball end. And then if you tension your yarn in your left hand, if you knit continental however you normally would, you can also just drape it over your index finger. You want a bit of tension on this. And then I usually sort of have my left fingers through the loop and I pinch it in my right hand. Pinch it in my left to pick up the needle and then transfer that pinch to my right hand. It can be slightly awkward to hold the needle tip and pinch the yarn and um, so you might need to play around a bit with what works for you here. And then our first stitch is going to be a yarn over which so I'm going to make a yarn over keeping that pinch and then I'm going to go through the loop to the left of this pinch. So through the loop over my ball end of yarn to the back and then scoop it back through the loop. So that gives me two stitches, one, two. Then I'm gonna repeat that. So yarn over through the loop and scoop the yarn back through. So that's four stitches, let's do that again. Yarn over through the loop, scoop back through. So that's six. That might be enough for your pattern. If I was making a muscle bar hat, I would do eight. So let's do two more. So yarn over, through the loop, scoop back through. So it gives me eight stitches. I'm just going to slide them along a bit so nothing falls off. And you can see I've got this big loop of yarn here. I'm going to pull that a little bit snugger. Don't worry too much about it being super tight or keeping your first couple of stitches really tight. We're going to be knitting in the round, so we're going to knit into this with this side facing. At this point you have a couple of options and which you choose depends a bit on how slippery your yarn is and also the yarn weight. Especially when I'm working with something like a slippery superwash sock yarn, I will leave all of my stitches on this one needle until I've knit the first round. It just ends up, everything falls apart if you try and slip them onto separate needles. This is like a stickier, chunkier yarn. I could slip it onto and maybe two or three DPNs for my first round and then rearrange them. But I'm going to show you how I would go about working them all on one needle. If your pattern begins with an odd number of stitches, the cast on process is very similar, but we're going to start off slightly differently. Um, instead of doing yarn over and then pull a stitch through, we're going to start with pulling a stitch through. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a loop in the same way but this time we're going to wrap the loop in the opposite direction so that the ball end is now the one on top. I've still got my ball end on the left and my tail on the right. So you know slide that along make that tail a little bit longer and then you tension the yarn in your left hand, keep that loop open, take your needle and then we're going to start simply by going through the loop and scooping up a stitch and then yarn over through the loop over the ball end and scoop it through. So you can see I've got three stitches here and they're kind of anchored at either end which is what we want. So yarn over, scoop through, that would give me five stitches. Let's do two more and make it seven. There we go. Pull our loop nice and closed, or open it up. And the process for then working your first round, distributing your stitches over your needles, is exactly the same as it is for 
casting on an even number of stitches. Before I begin, I want to make sure my tail end is at the back. And I'm bringing my ball end of yarn across the back and then kind of coming under that tail end. As you can see, I'm sort of locking them together here. I'm not leaving the tail at the front and coming up because that will leave my first stitch kind of unanchored. So that tail end is going to go to the back and then I'm bringing the ball end and I want to do, I do want to pull that across quite tightly. Think about an I chord. And then my first round is almost certainly going to have increases. I'm going to do knit front and back in every stitch. Your pattern might be, if you're making a lace shawl or blanket, your first round might be knit one yarn over. So I'm going to do knit front and back. And I'm going to do that in every stitch. And it is a bit tight and awkward, especially with this chunkier yarn, to work, do that all the way across. So actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just pick up another DPN. I've done half the stitches. I'm just going to do the other half with this second DPN. So you can choose which works better for you. So this obviously isn't how I would usually knit on DPNs with them kind of distributed like this. So now before working my next round, I am going to take my DPN and slip some of those stitches. Onto my so three needles here. A quick tip is actually that, especially if you struggle with ladders with your double pointed needles, is to distribute your stitches over four needles rather than three. So I'm going to just do this so I've got four stitches on each needle. There we go. It is a little bit at the kind of too many angry octopus tentacles stage. Um, but that gives me stitches distributed on four needles. And you can see this is much more wobbly a shape than on three needles, which sounds like it would be harder to knit. But the thing that that means is that your joins between your needles are more flexible and can come together more easily. And that helps to prevent ladders. So if I have the choice, I do try to distribute stitches on DPNs across four needles rather than three, which means then you need a fifth one to knit with. There are usually five in a set, so that works well. For Magic Loop, the actual cast on is the same, except you'll be doing it onto one of your needle tips rather than one DPN. So I'm just gonna cast on some stitches. When I'm working Magic Loop, what I usually do is split my stitches into two halves from that first round. So with Magic Loop, I'm not at risk of dropping a DPN out of just a couple of stitches. So I slide them all onto the cable, pinch the cable in half. This isn't the most flexible one. And then it can be helpful to have them both on the needle tips just to think about where you're going to start knitting. So if you look at where the tail end is, we're going to take that to the back and then that's going to be your first stitch that you knit into. So slide this needle tip out. I generally want to make sure I'm giving a bit of a tug on the ball end because I want my stitches I cast on to be nice and tight and neat, but I'm not worried so much about how open this loop is. And it can be much easier to knit into everything if that loop has a little bit of slack on it, just because then it's not pulling the base of your stitches. So then I'll knit front and back in each stitch. Generally when we're working a center arc cast on, we're trying to knit something like a flat circle, square, hexagon, or a hat crown. So we're casting on in the middle and then increasing pretty rapidly. And then at the end of that half of my stitches, I'll rotate, slide my bottom stitches onto this other needle tip. Again, that's usually much easier if you keep your loop fairly loose. Sometimes if your cast on stitches are quite tight and you're struggling to slide them on, it's easier to slide the other stitches off the needle first and then that'll give a bit more slack to slide these ones on. 
and then I'll work across those as well. There we go. If I slide all of my stitches onto the cable, you can kind of see what's going on a bit better. That we've got the center loop, and then all of our stitches are kind of coming off that, anchored from that center loop. And it's kind of nice to check that you've done it right and very satisfying to give that tail a tug and pull everything nice and tight. But I would recommend loosening it up a little bit, at least for the first few rounds. To be honest, you can, tighten it, you can leave tightening it until your project is close to done and you want to weave in that end. If you are making the muscle bar hat, do be aware that you will lose the opportunity to access the inside when you finish the other end of the tube. So you do want to make sure you go back and deal with that, tightening that up and weaving in the end before you get to the crown decreases. There is a little reminder in the pattern about that because it is easy to miss and it's harder to deal with from the right side. But if I open that up a bit more, it's actually quite tricky in this grippy yarn. You find if you're using like a superwash salt yarn, it'll just keep sliding open anyway. If I open that up a bit, I'm giving all of my stitches a bit more room to breathe and I'm making it feel more like knitting a bigger circumference in the round, which is much easier. So definitely keep that open until you've done at least your first few rounds. And after a few rounds, you'll have something like this, where you have more fabric to kind of hold your stitches and needles in place and you can definitely tighten it up at that point. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and you can start your next project work from the center out with new confidence. Do make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and tips and tricks. And I also have a semi-regular podcast where I talk about my design work, sizing and knitting and all that fun stuff. So make sure you subscribe for those and you can find all of my patterns, including the popular muscle bar hat that I was wearing at the beginning of this video on my website, isolda.com and on Ravelry. Until next time, bye.